So on board Leclerc here, we can see what on earth happened. Oh, he's dropped it. Oh no. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, that is probably the funniest intro I've ever done, but goodness, I was one else going on. Anyway, welcome back to the My Team series and episode four. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. We are going to do some upgrades to start with, and we are doing some air upgrades, and we are doing the secondary wing flaps. And I don't know why I keep saying we are doing, but we are. So yeah, that should come at the end or after the Austrian Grand Prix, which is the Grand Prix we are doing this weekend. And we also are doing the roll dampers, which should help with the tire wear, I believe, in the chassis department. But again, that's not gonna come until after this next race. And we also had 1.6 million to spend. And yeah, you probably know exactly what I spent that on. And that is resource points generation in the aerodynamics factory or facility. And yeah, that should just help us get loads of points to develop the car, hopefully. And we also had another department event. I seem to get one of these one or two every race, basically. And uh, yeah, basically this was a no brainer. I just started to invest because we get, spend a little bit of cash, but get loads of resource points which we kind of need. And that was all that happened in the build up really. So yeah, we flew through that. Um, but yeah, if you look at the comparison between us and the rest of the cars, we are still third, but we have progressed a little bit. So we're a little bit close to the Alpha Tauri. No, not Alpha Tauri. Yeah, a little bit of the Alpha Tauri, but Alpha Romeo is what I meant. And the Alpine. And uh, yeah, that just means that we might be able to get out of Q1 possibly. But yeah, we went straight into practice um which actually went pretty well we didn't have any bugs or anything and we did the practice programs pretty easily which was good we only didn't get one development boost i think um i don't really know why we didn't do that but we didn't get it and that's fair enough and uh, that was our pace so obviously did it on the medium tire we didn't actually do a qualifying run so i don't actually know how a qualifying pace is but on the medium tire we're about two one or two tenths quicker than our teammate which is kind of where we should be i think um not too quick and not too slow but that was all in the dry and the qualifying and the race is going to rain so yeah i'm not really sure what's going to happen i have got a wet weather setup to put on this car and we will put it on and hopefully we can do something And here we are, and it is absolutely pouring it down. And yeah, we completely botched the first lap, the first attempt, as we went sailing wide. Pun not intended. Um, but yeah, second lap was a little bit better, and we're just gonna go through it now. So yeah, the first rule in wet weather is just keep it on the track. So just take it nice and chilled, and don't try and do the fastest lap you can. Just try and be nice and chilled, and just get the car around the track. Um, which is kind of what we do in this lap. It's not blisteringly quick, but you know, just keeping it on the track uh, is the main thing. And you can see we're already starting to improve on our first lap. So we're up, what's that, nearly a couple of tenths already, just by being a little bit more cautious. Um, but yeah, it is proper wet at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if it is drying out or not, um, but that is one of the hasses in front of us. Hopefully they don't hold us up too much, but they shouldn't do as we're up nearly three tenths now. So yeah, going through the middle section now, and we are, well, see, we could have gone a lot quicker there. We actually lost a little bit of time, so we didn't push it as much. But as I was saying, just try and do the first lap, just try and keep it on the track, and then we'll probably go out again, just to try and see if we can go a little bit quicker. But we're much quicker through that part of the track, as we are up nearly four tenths. So yeah, a little bit slower there, and I think we're quite slow through here as well. But it is quite twitchy, the car. So the setup seems okay. And that is a 114.5, but I definitely think we could go quicker. And after everyone's lap, yeah, we are currently 18th with our teammate in 20th, and he is about four tenths slower than us. So that is quite a big difference. Um, but obviously we've had two attempts to his one. But yeah, at the end of that, we the track did start drying out a little bit. So, you know, it was time for inters. Um, so we should go quite a bit quicker. And if you look in the top right hand corner there, we have time this to perfection, basically. So we are one of the last cars over the line, which means that we should get the most improved track. I don't know what I'm trying to say. So the track's constantly improving. And we should get the biggest benefit from that because we're one of the last cars to cross the line. 
Whether that means we can get into Q1, uh, into Q2, sorry, we're in Q1, get into Q2 is a different story, but we are currently doing pretty well. We're up seven and a half tenths as we go underneath that billboard there into turn four. That is quite smooth there. Try not to touch the curbs with the lines as you probably will get spun around like you're on a merry-go-round, which you don't really want to do. That's, that's not very quick. Um, and my Max Verstappen has just done a 111, so that is blindingly quick compared to what we did before. And we are one and a half seconds fast already. So yeah, being on the Inter is definitely quicker. As Hamilton is a 110 110.7. So yeah, hopefully we can. We're not gonna get anywhere near that, but hopefully we can do maybe like a 112, 113, something like that at least, which we're gonna do because Russell's done a 113 there. We go over the line, we did a 112. Yeah, a 112.2 and that's put us 14th. Get in there. So we are into Q2. I think that's our first time into Q2 as well. So that is very good. Um, and I think that's more just taking advantage of the drying out track. Um, as our teammate was about eight tenths slower than us and only qualified 21st. So that's quite disappointing from Pedro. But, you know, I think that is either set up or just the fact that the track was drying out. Um, but in Q2, probably just an awful qualifying session, really, um, as we didn't improve even on our second lap. And we were three tenths off Raikkonen as well. So we are going to start this race in 16th, which isn't bad, but it possibly could have been a little bit better than that. This is it then, race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix. Not long to go before our drivers hurtle off the line and into the first turn, the Nicky Lauda curve, as it was renamed in 2019, in memory of one of Formula One's most beloved figures. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Ricardo. Verstappen, Lando Norris, and Perez, Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel, and Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Sonoda, Lance Stroll, and Ocon, Raikkonen, Wang, George Russell, and Nikita Mazepin, Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher, Piquet, and Nicholas Latifi. And now it's time to head down to the track. All right, so P16, and we are not alongside Mazepin for once. We're alongside Raikkonen, and I much prefer it here. Um, but yeah, looking at the race strategy quickly, we are going to do a two-stopper, probably. It says one stop there, but we probably will have to do a two-stopper because it looks like it's going to dry out. And that sun probably means that it's going to dry out more than it did last time. So I think we will have to do a stop to go on the slicks. But we're also going to need to do a stop to go on to a fresh pair of inters. So I have decided to do that earlier than it suggested, just so we can possibly do the undercut. But anyway, let's see if that happens in the race. So three lights, four lights, five lights, engine revved, and away we go eventually. And we have given out way too many revs, and we have bogged down quite a bit. And we can't even seem to get past Raikkonen at the moment, as that is someone in front of us going crazy. I think that's Ocon, as we go up the inside of Ocon, and I think that's Sonoda as well. And, uh, yeah, we didn't get very good traction out of that, and that means Sonoda and Ocon have just gone back past. And if you're wondering why there's no name tags, they were annoying me a little bit, so I decided to turn them off. Um, but we can work out who it is by the table on the left-hand side as we go up the inside of Ocon, but he's immediately gone round the outside of Sonoda and taken a place back, so we are still P15. So just the one place compared to about six or seven at this point last race. Um, we did start last, so P15 is still pretty good. I thought about going up the inside of Sonoda there, but uh, he did cover that off a little bit, and I decided I'm just going to stick behind him because it's really early on. And it's wet, I don't really want to lose my front wing on the first lap because that's kind of your whole race ruined. Um, so we're just going to play the long game here and just kind of see where Sonoda is. But more importantly, behind us, Russell has got ahead of Raikkonen. And that Williams is pretty slow in the dry, so I assume it's pretty slow in the wet as well. Um, so I don't think we are going to come under too much pressure from behind, I wouldn't have thought. So if we can kind of stick half close to Sonoda here, we could be in for a decent result because he's kind of holding up Russell. Uh, Russell's kind of holding up Raikkonen and stuff. And at the end of the first lap, we are P15, which is very good news. And yeah, basically what I was saying about Russell happened. So a couple of laps in, and we are still behind Sonoda, 
actually we're half close to Sonodo, just can't seem to get past him at the moment. Um, but yeah, Russell is dropping back, and as you can see on lap six now, we are still relatively close to Sonoda, but Russell is nearly four seconds behind us already, so that's quite a big gap we're pulling out just by being close to these guys ahead. And obviously we don't have any DRS, but we are thinking about sending up a move up the inside. He's kind of half moved across, but we managed to get the brakes on and giving him plenty of room, no contact, and we have made that, well, pretty cleanly, I think. And yeah, he's actually dropped back, so we, we seem to get very good traction at the top of the hill there, coming out of turn three, and going into turn four now, gone a little bit deep but yes yeah, Sonoda's not really close enough to make a challenge so yeah he must have um, dropped quite a bit behind us um, but he is very close to us now so he's definitely quicker than us um, but we just seem to be good at the top of the hill and um, we're on lap nine and yeah. Jeff is telling us to change our strategy and uh, yeah I guess he knows something we don't so we're just going to confirm that and just see what happens um, because I haven't really checked the weather report at this, this uh, point either um, and Sonoda wasn't close enough to really go for a move again. And again, we get good traction and he's kind of dropped back and we seamlessly move to lap 12 and we still have Sonoda behind us, but Ocon is pulling away in front of us as there is a yellow car and a safety car. A yellow car, yellow flag and a safety car. And uh, yeah, let's go and have a look and see what exactly that's for. So this is Mick Schumacher at turn three. Oh, he's giving away too many beans and he has spun round and Someone's gone into the back of them there. I think that might have even been our teammate. That's Williams that's gone through. And our teammate has got a five second time penalty for causing a collision. And I assume he just goes into the back of the Alpha here. Yes, he does. What a rookie mistake. He is a rookie, so he can kind of get away with it. But that, yeah, I don't know why it just didn't go around the outside, like Eminem, or around the inside, maybe. Um, but we decided not to pit off under the safety car because everyone else was. I was worried we were going to get stuck. And as you can see, we managed to get quite a few people here. And we actually came, well, Lando came out in front of us and we were P7. So that seemed to work out pretty well for us. Um, but then we realized we might have made a big mistake um, because everyone else is going to have fresh inters and we will need to pit at some point. So I decided to come in the next lap, which I don't think many people will have done. And luckily for us, the safety car hadn't caught up yet. So we weren't like uh, bunched up. So we might be able to come out at least where we were um, before the safety car. Um, but we'll see what we can do. Hopefully the boys and girls of the pit crew do a great job. Old Inters off, new Inters on, green light a little bit slow to get away. And we are currently 13th. And I think we might get ahead of Stroll, who must have got held up in the pits. Because he was quite a bit ahead of us, I think. And that is us actually coming out ahead of Stroll. So he can't overtake us because of the yellow flags. So not only ahead of Sonoda, We've also managed to get ahead of Stroll. But yeah, the safety car was out for a long time. A good three, four laps. Um, so now we're on to lap 15. Going to start lap 16. And it's, racing is resuming. And we have gone awful getaway. So Stroll is going to be all over the back of us. Going into turn one, I believe. He's quite close. Managed to kind of just fend him off a little bit. But we're losing a bit of traction there. So he's going to be all over us again going up the hill. And you can see he's actually going to go for a move now. So getting a bad start and not got the tyres quite ready. We're going to have to go defensive up the inside. Hopefully don't have any contact. Going to left a lot of space there. And he just kind of didn't have the traction to get the power down. And I think for the time being, we are okay. So we just about fended off from Stroll there. But that was quite lucky as the leaders are coming in because they also didn't stop like us but then didn't stop again and Bottas has been held up there so that is absolutely tragic for the Mercedes team um, very unlike them although they have made a few mistakes this year so maybe it is like them I don't know but either way we're up to 10th how on earth has that happened so again for a second race in a row we are currently going to get points obviously a long way to go but yeah as you can see on the minimap there that is the Mercedes and the McLaren I think that's Ricardo. Uh, but look how far back they are. They have got a lot of catching up to do. I mean, they've got the cars to do it, but that is, yeah, that is quite a long way to come back from. And uh, yeah, Stroll again was half close to us, but he was dropping back a little bit. And that is his yellow flag. And that is exactly why, because Stroll is actually out of this Grand Prix by looks of it. So that seems to be some sort of mechanical failure. Again, for a Mercedes-powered car, the, the reliability in this game, to start with in my team, for the Mercedes cars, is so bad. And that is another victim. And going up to turn three, we just got confirmation that that is Stroll out of the race. 
And there's another yellow flag. Oh, and we've just got about four or five cars there. What on earth happened there? That was ridiculous. As there's a time penalty for Leclerc, there is a safety car as well. So what on earth happened there? Even Kimi Raikkonen's out. Oh, no, Kimi. What happened? Let's go and have a look. So this is Leclerc going into turn three. Oh, he's done the exact same as Schumacher. Just put the power down way too much. And then Sainz has crashed into his teammate. We go around the outside. One of the Alpha Tauris goes into the back. And then a Williams as well, I think. So this is on board Charles Leclerc. And yeah, he's just dropped it. And then, oh, Sainz comes to the back of him. And Leclerc has got a time penalty for that. Five seconds for causing a collision, which is fair enough. But it does look like Sainz drives into him. But I guess Leclerc caused this whole melee, if you want. And uh, yeah, that is a strange one. As Sainz has got away with no penalty, even though he drove into his teammate. Strange one. Um, but yeah, this is Sonoda, who's also got a time penalty. So another five seconds. They're giving her out left, right and centre at the moment. And that's why gone straight to the back. Oh, and then someone's hit him again. As Russell was also got a time penalty. God, blimey. For that. And then this is Raikkonen. So I assume this is how Raikkonen goes out, is it? Yeah, so he's lost his front left there. Whoa, what a weird accident. This is just bonkers. So let's see if we get a better view of that. I think we do, actually. Yeah, here it is. So this is Raikkonen, just going out of turn three. I assume he tries going around, just leaves it too late. Oh, and then he gets hit by someone else. But everyone's ghosted, so that's why we're struggling to get replays. So it's Mazepin, who's also got a five-second time penalty for that. Obviously, couldn't see much more of that. And then that is Latifi, who's got a five-second time penalty, but not for causing a collision, for ignoring yellow flags. That is a bit harsh, because he had to overtake them. So what that means, with the leaders kind of pitting and the midfield kind of crashing into each other, is that Fernando Alonso is leading the Grand Prix, followed by Perez, I think that's Lando, then Verstappen, then Vettel, then us, then Latifi, and then I think it's Giovinazzi, and then possibly our teammates. The whole order is bonkers. Um, but also Latifi has got that five second penalty that he will have to serve at some point. Um, but with 16 laps to go, or will be 15 when we cross the line, this is gonna be very tasty towards the end of the race now. As uh, we have kind of messed up the start again, the restart again, because we we're in uh, the wrong gear. So I need to practice that, that really, but um, we shouldn't come under too much pressure, hopefully, because Latifi is behind us, and that is Williams. Having said that, though, he is gaining. So everything I've just said might go out the window, but I don't think he's close enough to really make a move. And in fact, no, he's not. So we have got good traction at the top of the hairpin again, and we are just pulling away. So for the time being, we are relatively safe from Latifi. And next lap, we are 1.5 seconds ahead of Latifi, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about him, as he's just holding everyone up. But we are pretty close to Seb now as well, who's gone quite defensive, almost went on the grass there. He's taken the inside line. We're going to have to try and go around the outside, just carry a bit more speed. Are we going to do that? I'm not sure. Seb's had a little bit of a moment there, so can't get the power down. And we've got around the outside, and I think we've made that stick, as he is about two tenths behind us now. So, yeah, somehow we have made that work, because that Aston is definitely quicker than us in normal trim. Uh, but with the wet weather set up, maybe we are quicker because we did get past Stroll as well. Uh, but yeah, as soon as it starts to go dry, I assume Vettel is going to be flying. But even when it wasn't dry, he was still all over the back of us going into turn three Captain again. He's seconds. only two turns behind us. He's not quite close enough to make a move, although he has set one up the inside now. Uh, just about get the power down. And I think we've got enough power down to kind of see him stay behind us. I say that, again, he is pretty close. Is he going to go around the outside this time? I think he is. You can see his front end plate there, giving him plenty of room, but he's not quite taking it. And again, we just about hold on. But yeah, he's much quicker than us. So the fact that we managed to get a good traction coming out of here, so this is the next lap. He's also sent the one up the inside again, but we just managed, managed to get more traction down due to the setup. And that seems to kind of be enough just about because he's not brave enough to really attack us here we did quite a defensive line there in the middle of the road so he didn't really have anywhere to go and yet again we have kept Sebastian Vettel behind us so I'm not sure how much longer we can do this because it is starting to dry out as well so he gets quicker every lap and um, but with what's that 12 laps to go 11 laps to go DRS has just been enabled so that basically means like last time it's now safe to go onto dry tyres basically as uh, DRS is enabled so yeah that's exactly what we're going to do but with Jeff talking so much I couldn't actually tell him that I wanted to box so we have come in on the grass even 
not knowing if there is going to be a pit crew. Um, and I quickly had to change that down to soft tyres, new soft tyres. That will hopefully see us to the end of the race. We'll go see the other cars put in on medium. So we may have made a little bit of a mistake there. Come in, take the inters off and the softs are on and away we go. And I think we have got ahead of Vettel there. In fact, I think that is also a Mercedes. Somehow, the Mercedes were quite far back, but Mercedes has got in between us and Vettel. And we are now on the dry, slick tyres. And I think we are going to be a sitting duck. And the next lap, in fact, that is Lewis Hamilton all over the back of us already. Now we're on soft tyres and he's on mediums and he's already got past us. Um, so that Mercedes, ooh, I thought we were going to go into the back of him then. Managed to just about hold on as uh, he's still quite slippery. Um, but the soft should give us the most amount of grip in these sort of uncertain circumstances. And uh, yeah, so... So Lewis got past us and then on the same lap Vettel is so much faster than us in that middle sector and he's going to send one up the inside I think on a penultimate corner as he has done and he's literally just sailed past us that is way too easy so we are starting to struggle now with this wet weather setup because we've got softs on and they're still flying past us on mediums and I know they're much quicker than us normally but even so that's a big difference as we have missed our breaking point we've gone a bit too deep and Vettel has just gone away in the distance and we are immediately coming under attack from Ricardo now so this is for se sixth place we have now moved down to seventh as Ricardo has got us okay, we lost the position. going into to turn focus. three hopefully we can kind of just sail around the outside possibly no nope, we're going to do a switch back as Crofty would say and actually we have got a lot of traction there and we have managed to get past we're back up to six we're going to go quite defensive we've even got DRS and we're not pulling away so it shows how fast that McLaren is going to take the inside line. He's pushing us a little bit into the inside. I don't think we're going to be able to be a match from here, though, as he just got more traction and speed, and that is Ricardo ahead of us. That was a good battle, though. And uh, I don't know why that sounded a bit Australian, possibly. Good battle, though. Um, sorry, Ricardo. Didn't mean to come out like that. Um, but, yeah, he did battle us hard and pushed us to a little bit, you know, squeeze a bit, which I quite like when the AI is a bit like that as uh, Bottas just literally sails past us as well. So anyone that's got half decent pace is absolutely flying in the dry on the dry tyre again. And not only that, we then come under attack from Gasly now as well. So we are literally falling like a stone in water. And he's trying to go around the outside into turn four. We're giving plenty of room side by side. We still have the inside. We're going to have the outside this time. So he should get past us here. Gives us plenty of room around the outside. We're going to go back around the outside. Still side by side. We're going to be on the outside again. We're going to struggle out here, though. Gone a little bit wide onto the marbles. And I think that is Gasly Pass. As it is. So we are now ninth. And look, Bottas is already eight seconds ahead. And this is only like three laps later. So with that in mind, we might actually lose out to Giovinazzi and Sainz if our pace is that bad. Um... So yeah, this is going to be quite tragic now if we don't manage to get anything out of this because we've been in the points for quite a while now, since lap 17, I think. And we got our first track warning as well as we're starting to push the limits a little bit. We have got DRS on Gasly though, so we are catching. Oh, and his, his engine's gone. That is Gasly out of the race, I think, as his Honda power unit has given up. And that promotes us back up to eighth. And there he is. Oh, that is tragic. He was on for a good result there. And yeah, he's out of the race, unfortunately, but to our fortunate, to our fortune, that is us back up to eighth. And that might just mean we could at least hold on to a point if Sainz and Giovinazzi gets us, get us. I'm not sure where anyone else is, but yeah, currently, yeah, that, that, that's not too bad. But we have also got quite a lot of wear to our control electronics, which basically means that it's going to wear every other component of the power unit just that little bit more. So... Yeah, everything is seeming to go wrong towards the end of the race for us. And uh, going on to the penultimate lap, Giovinazzi is within two seconds and Sainz is within three. But our tyres are definitely starting to go off. And on to the last lap, which we're just going to follow us for the rest of the lap now to see what happens. Giovinazzi is only 1.3 seconds behind us and Sainz is all over the back of him as well, going into turn one. And you can see them battling there as well. As you've got an Alpine, and I think there was another Alvatero, so that must have been Sonoda in the background. As it looked like, Science has got past. Yeah, so he was going past uh, Giovinazzi there, which really is not good news for us, is that Ferrari is going to be a lot quicker than that Alfa Romeo. So we kind of have to hope that these softs hold on, because we are going to be so slow now through this last sector and a half. Um, and Science is already seven tenths behind us. 
So, wow, yeah, he's gaining really quick. And where is he now? So there he is. Look at he's he's absolutely flying his car loss. He's going to get us, isn't he? Going into the last couple of well corners of that last sector, and oh, he's so close. He's going to try and go around the outside. I think we're going to cover off the inside. Just going to have the uh, inside and push him a little bit wide there. Going into the final corner. We've gone a little bit wide, and that means Carlos is alongside us. We're going up to race up towards the line, and we are just about going to hold on, I think. But that was much closer than I thought it would be. I thought we were going to lose it, but I think we've come eighth. And we should get one, two, four points, if I've done the maths correctly, which is a lot of points for us, as Antonio Giovinazzi gets driver of the day. And Sergio Perez wins, and he's doing the new animation which they put in, which I quite like, compared to just the finger points he won. And on the podium with him is Max and Lewis. So actually, after a crazy race, it was quite a normal podium, which is a bit disappointing. Um, but that is the result. So Sergio from Max from Lewis. Vettel got fourth in the end. So if we were able to stay with Vettel, we could have got well up there, but we just couldn't. Ricardo fifth, Valtteri sixth, Lando seventh, us eighth. That is a great result. I was not expecting that going into this weekend. Science ninth, and he was what? five one hundredths of a second behind us so that was pretty close and antonio giovinazzi 10th fernando who was first only finished 11th in the end our teammate did get 14th from 21st so that is a great result in the end and uh yeah that is that is a great result actually for us in just in general 8th and 14th i'll take that and we had three dnfs although pierre is classified but yeah he is a dnf as well and just quickly looking at the driver standings, we are now 12th with our five points. Get in there. And Max has extended his Champions League by two points to six over Lewis now. And then finally, quickly looking at the constructors, Red Bull have now taken the lead by 15 points and we stay eighth. And that is pretty much everything that happened in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one.